Uh, welcome. Uh, we're really, really glad to have you all here. Uh, I am Robert Lerner. I'm an engineering manager here at Avanza. This is Johan, who's a product owner, and Christopher, who's one of our senior developers. Uh, hope you found the pizzas and beverages to your delight. Uh, today we're going to speak about uh, progressive web applications, or PWA, which we find to be a very promising uh, technology here at Avanza. We think it's uh, going to have a prominent uh, place in the landscape of application development in the future. Uh, I'm going to try to uh, paint a picture of what we do here at Avanza and how we do it in order to give you some context for Christopher, who's going to talk about the techie side of PWA. And then uh, Johan is going to talk about some, share some of our key learnings and give you a short demo of some stuff that we built using this technique. Uh, at Avanza, our mission as a company is to create a, a better future for millions of uh, people. And we do that by uh, by offering financial uh, products and educational services that uh, enables you as a, as a user to have a better financial development uh, in your life. And uh, this is uh, something that uh, we are, it's really integrated in, in our companies, in the company's culture. We, we, uh, we really, uh, we really uh, set the users first when we make uh, business decisions and develop products. Uh, we're, we're actually the, the leading online savings platform in, uh, in Sweden. We're offering uh, products as uh, stock exchange, uh, fund savings, pension savings, mortgages and interest products. And we we are we are also packaging these uh, products in uh, in uh, more accessible uh, packages to enable uh, users that are not uh, as likely to get on the stock market to take uh, take part in that. We recently passed 850,000 active customers, uh, which uh, might seem like a great deal of the of the Swedish Swedish savings market but we if you look at the market as a whole we have a 4% market share of the whole amount of money that goes into the savings market so there's a, a lot of potential for for growth uh, we got we are uh, 420 employees and uh, about uh, 160 working on the IT department so our, our strategy as a, as a whole is to create a cheaper, better, and simpler product products. And we do that by, we package these products in a top-notch user experience. And we recently, we, or, or up until a few years ago, we, we focused on the, the stock market uh, and that, uh, that only enables us to go so far in, uh, in, in giving a better future for millions of users. So we've recently started to broaden our, our uh, perspective and trying to reach uh, new customer groups. Uh, we're organized in 19 agile teams. Uh, we have one trail of product teams that focuses on our core products, such as the stock market, funds, interest and so forth. We got, we got one trail of teams that focuses on the on, on steps in our customer journey. And we got one trail of teams that focuses on, on, on uh, more of creating an environment and conditions for the, the product and customer journey teams. Each of those teams are, are truly cross-functional. By that I mean that they have all the competencies uh, needed in order to excel in their mission. So, for instance, the fund team has a 
product owner that's uh, responsible for the vision of the team. Uh, they have a product specialist that knows all the nitty gritty business details of the fund market. They have a UX designer, a graphic designer, and front end developers and back end developers. So all the competencies that are needed to excel on their missions to create the best platform for fund savings. One thing we, we uh, work very hard to establish is an, an environment where, where it is uh, safe to fail uh, as a team. We, we really want the teams to, to try new stuff, uh, not knowing for sure if they work or not. Uh, and we want individuals to try new techniques and new, new methodologies in order to learn. We see that this, uh, these are good conditions in order to make a make uh, innovation. And Avanza has a strong history of innovation. We, when we ask our, our customers uh, why they chose Avanza over the competition, one common answer is that uh, we, are, we are leading the product development in the financial sector, uh, and we package these uh, new products in a nice, lean user experience. We've, we've, been, we've been part of uh, uh, 1998 when Avanza started. The, the uh, common price for, for uh, uh, when you make a transaction on the stock market, uh, brokerage fees were 200 cr cr Swedish crowns a transaction. Now all our customers can make the same transactions for just one crown. So we've, we've been really efficient and, and uh, yeah driving the price. Uh, we've also established, uh, on the more technical side, we've established a platform where we can uh, have linear scalability in our backend, which uh, enables us to, to uh, uh, take uh, events such as uh, when Donald Trump being elected or Britain taking a leap of faith, we can handle that without breaking a sweat. On, on the mobile side of the strategy, uh, we, we're, we're coming from a background on the stock market where, where it's part of our user's identity to have loads of screens and super very high density in the information. Uh, so we, we have, uh, we've been on a journey where we just uh, recently promoted our, our mobile application as our primary channels uh, for the users. Uh, and uh, we're, now, we're now on the quest to establish a platform where we can let these uh, product and customer journey teams uh, develop uh, a tight or, or a great user experience uh, without uh, like compromising these things by using a platform. And one, one important part of our, our culture is we, we try to have a, what we call a tight tech stack, which uh, I see that as a, as a light uh, toolbox where each tool is uh, diverse but uh, up to the task. So we, we're, we're trying to have a, like a, yeah, a real tight tech stack. And we also got this uh, an omni-channel strategy where we, in each of our, our platforms and, and across all devices, we, we strive to make the user experience uh, look and feel the same. Okay, let's... Uh, Short brief introduction of Avanza. Christopher, take it away. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Christopher Nording, uh, and I'm, from, I'm a front end developer. I have been working at Avanza for the past years and I will give you an introduction to progressive web apps a little bit of the history behind it and also our thoughts about PWA at Avanza um, if you start with a history uh, uh, progressive web apps was introduced a couple of years ago uh, at that time uh, the biggest supporter were Google uh, which means that it worked, had the best support on, on Android devices with 
Chrome as the primary browser. Today is completely different. Uh, today, the most of the core concepts of the PWA is supported by other big companies like Microsoft, Mozilla, and of course Apple. And that means uh, that a PWA works really good on both Android and iOS devices in a modern browser. And the fun thing is that uh, PWA started with focus on mobile and tablets, uh, but is today available even on desktop. Okay, so what is a progressive web app? A progressive web app uses modern web capabilities to deliver an app like user experience. The thing is that a PWA combines the best from web with the best from apps. A PWA have the reach, uh, the discoverability, and the linkability from web, which means that it's useful for the user on the first visit. And over time, it's become more and more powerful. It loads quicker, it uses more and more native features, and eventually it starts to live on the user's home screen. And that way it can create an engagement user experience. At the core concept of progressive web apps is fast, reliable, and engaging. Um, with fast, it's, well, it should have a smooth user experience. Reliable means that it should be working even if the user is offline, like in flight mode, and also on flaky connections. Engaging is more about creating an immersive user experience for the user that should encourage them to use the app and use features like push notifications. And also, of course, living on the home screen which is much more easier than to tap an icon than to write an address in the browser. Uh, for you, as I'm, I guess many of you are app developers, uh, this is nothing new. Uh, we expect it from native apps. Uh, the thing is, with PWA, we can do it on the web as well. But there is more. Um, a progressive app app is also progressive. It's in the name, and it's like a backbone of the model. It means like you should give the user the best possible user experience based on the user's device and the support in the browser. It should also be secure. Uh, a PWA has to be served over HTTPS, which means it's a secure connection. Uh, it should also be responsive which means that it should be working on mobile, tablets, or desktop, or any other device size that the user are using. And least but not le last, <laughs> uh, it should be linkable. Uh, it's one of the strong things with, with a web app. Uh, a simple URL can be shareable and used by many other people in an easy way. Okay, so now you know the core concepts of, of a PWA, but we really doesn't know anything about the tech behind it. I guess some of you have, uh, could have guessed that it's based on web technologies, but the thing is that it's not just one technology. PWA is like an umbrella with different APIs and features. Uh, it's based on uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. It's framework independent. Uh, at Avanza, we are using Angular as the main framework for our PWA. Uh, so if it's not framework dependent, uh, we still have some, some core APIs and features that we use to fulfill our, our PWA. And that is, for fast, it's, it's our cache, uh, it's uh, the browser cache. Uh, we also have the possibility to preload resources before the user are visiting different views in our app. Uh, you can, uh, 
when you're using heavy animations, you can lift off the animation from the main thread and use the GPU, GPU instead. Uh, for reliable part, we have the service worker. It's, the, it's one of the core things that give the possibility to, to open a PWA in offline mode. It's like a proxy behind the network and the browser. And of course, we have offline storage APIs like local storage and session storage. For engaging, to fulfill the engaging part, we have push notifications API, which can send, like you know, push notification for the users to live in the notification area on the phone. Or if, you are, if it's using on desktop, it's, it's, it's in the right corner in the notification area there as well. We also had the web app manifest uh, specification. In that, we can set screen orientation, if it should be using full screen mode uh, or, or minimalistic mode. Uh, we can set splash screen icons and so forth. Uh, we can also use things like camera, accelerometer, and GPS, and a lot much more native feature that's creating engagement. So that's the feature, the core features that we use to, to fulfill the, the PWA concept. Uh, but we think it's so much more at Avanza. The thing is that we don't think that with the technology that you can create a successful PWA. It has to be more. And we, we believe that the user experience is a very important part of that. Uh, so now I'm going to show you some, some uh, UX patterns that we believe is make it or break it for a PWA. Uh, and that is, for fast, it's instant feedback. Uh, user demands that today. I mean, in, in native apps, it's, everything is instant. Um, and we should give it to them. Uh, and uh, we, we, will, we would like to be smart, think outside the box. Uh, what is really instant feedback? If, check, if you look at the re reliable part, uh, you should always design upfront for offline mode. If we do that, we can create a superb user experience when we are online as well. Uh, if we design for offline mode, we can queue operations when the user is offline, and we can resend them when we're getting online again. And this is a one way to trick the user to get the feeling of instant feedback. We can give them <coughs> instant feedback that they have done something, and then when we're getting online again, we sends the queue to the backend. And regarding the engage, engaging part, uh, uh, we have really struggled with the app interaction patterns. Uh, because, of, because we are using web technologies, we don't have to use a vertical scroll list. We can do other, other things as well. And this has really been a, a challenge for us to, to reach out inside the organization. But we think it's very important to design for touch and not for mouse pointers. You should have buttons available for left and right handed or fat fingers, stuff like that. Uh, so if you're gonna create a successful PWA, you have to also have in mind the user experience part. Um, we don't really think that the user care what technologies that that your app is built with. It's more like what they get. And it should just work. Thank you. <clears throat> so uh, my name is Johan Bussi. Uh, you can hear me, it's quite loud, isn't it? Is it better? Yeah, good. Um, I'm the product owner of uh, something we call a client platform. Uh, it's, it's the group that makes these kinds of technical decisions. Uh, and I will talk a little bit about how this technology fits into the Avanza context uh, and our learnings from that. L let me start with our team. 
This is our mission, uh, that each team can independently and efficiently develop the user experience required to meet their goals both today and in the future. With teams, uh, in this sentence, we, uh, th these are the teams that are developing products and services towards our customers. And it's actually, out of these 19 teams, it's actually 12 different teams uh, releasing stuff out to our customers. Uh, so we want all of them to be fully independent. They should be able to release everything independently without coordinating with the others. We also want that process to be very efficient. And we want to, it to work today and also many years ahead. Uh, and that puts quite a lot of, of uh, challenges for our team to find that technology. Um, but let me also tell you why, it, why we believe it is a fit for us. Uh, we talked about all this several cross-functional teams. Uh, if you have one up team, maybe it's not the same uh, importance of, of this. Um, one of our strategies is also to have keep a very tight tech stack. Uh, if we have that, we can be cheaper and better. Uh, and it, it's, it's an important part of our strategy in the sense that uh, it helps us, us to become this cheaper and better. Uh, the omnichannel strategy we discussed, we have the same kind of, of design and the same kind of user experience across all different channels. We have three different channels. It's web, iOS application, and Android application. And we decided to have them all look and feel the same way. We have very short release cycles. Uh, we started off a couple uh, with three weeks. We're going for two weeks. Now we're at one week. So we're releasing every single week. And we're aiming for to have it at any time, to have each of these teams to have be completely independent of each other. Avanza's interface is also fairly simple and static. We're not building a game. Uh, so it's, it's, it's fairly easy. And with this, we mean that it, it fits good for us. But it's not maybe for everyone. Uh, but it's a good fit for us. The journey for us to come to that decision, it started uh, already one year ago when the team was formed, this client platform. Um, we started off with listing 15 different frameworks that we wanted to try out. Uh, we did five different sprints, four with technologies, uh, and one going out to other companies and just interviewing them how they solved the challenges that we saw. Meanwhile, uh, Design and UX also formed this Omni strategy. So when that was done, we wanted to do a proof of concept to try out uh, the uh, <coughs> hypotheses and, and the, thing, the, ri the biggest risk that we saw. Uh, that was successful, so we went further on uh, to uh, implement our first PVA inter uh, interface in the app. And that's actually, I will show that a little bit later. When that was done, and we, we saw that this decision that we had made quite a huge impact on our company. Uh, for example, the organization, instead of having native. Uh, in all the different uh, native confidence in all the different teams. Maybe we could centralize that and have those uh, doing what we actually can't do with PVA. They, they can do that in, an, in another team. So that was done during the autumn. And now we're working on a migration plan. Basically, we're at 10% today of, of uh, PWA in the app. Uh, and we're looking for how do we go about in the best way to go from that to actually fulfilling this mission where all the different teams can release independently. So we need to be careful how we do this. I will come back to that as well after the, the demo. 
So what I will show you now is something we call portfolio generator. Um, it's in Swedish, but but what what I want you to look for is more the uh, app like uh, uh, UX and how it actually loads. But to to introduce it, uh, the portfolio generator is basically when you as a customer you're you're not really a beginner and you're not really an expert, but, but you need some inspiration and some help selecting the funds that is uh, for you specifically. So you go through a couple of questions and uh, parameters to, to set your specific portfolio. So look for how it's loading up and how up like uh, user experience on this one. So basically, this is pressing it up and And you answer some questions, you can select different values. So remember, this was one of the first thing that we uh, implemented into our app. What did you see? Did, can anyone see any comments on how it was loading or any of the interfaces? Let me tell you like this. When, when it was loading, it actually take three seconds to load if it would be a normal uh, web. Uh, page because all the resources that it needs to load. So we implemented a preload and a cache to make it work a little bit faster. We're still not really there. We need to optimize that that last piece. But this is this is crucial that we're working on to make it feel like it's an app that it 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 needs to be very snappy in that sense. Um, another thing is what you're seeing right here and now. This is uh, actually just a select list that we designed in a different way. Uh, so it, it's, it's more like how it should look like in an app. And it's, it didn't start like this. It started like a normal you know, select list that you see in the web. But because we put it in the PVA and we release every week, one week later we could actually change it to this. So I, I want to end with a couple of key learnings and, uh, and start by emphasizing this technology and user experience. This is a technology, but when implementing, you need to work with both. Uh, for example, this select list or how you press buttons, it needs to, you need to get that instant feedback. Uh, the preload as I talked about, uh, it's really a challenge that you need to overcome uh, when it comes to, to this. We have, in this example, we have a preload and a cache, but you can do animations uh, during load and uh, pre-render and stuff like that, uh, that we also work with later on to make it feel like it's native. Another key learning is that this example, it's a guide, and it, it's when it opens up, you need to load it, but then it's P, PWA from start to end. You don't want to go between uh, the technologies all the time. You want to minimize those bridges between the technologies uh, because it minimizes a lot of fuss and a lot of complexity, basically. Uh, so I think those were the three key learnings so far uh, on this. We will be here to answer any questions, but that was basically everything from us. Thank you. Hello. 
Uh, great talk. So you go on about how this is great for making your <coughs> your platform or your product be um, you know consistent across platforms, but how do you um, <coughs> like deal with the fact that the platforms are different? Like so, I have the demo you have here in my Avanza app, and there are multiple things that give it away as not native iOS, like you know choppy animations and the the navigation bar wasn't correct, and like in this view with the sliders, you can you if you scroll, you actually scroll the view behind it, you know stuff like that. Like you you don't get that kind of thing on iOS. So like. How much effort do you put into actually making it fit in with the target platform and not have you know telltale web things like scrolling underneath the thing you're actually scrolling and stuff? So I mean, this particular example, you will see a lot of those things uh, that I mean, as you're seeing now, and we're constantly working on those different things, but. Uh, the top bar is actually native uh, on on that, uh, but you're completely right. I mean, we need to. Well, the the broader question is like the platforms are different. Like, some you yep. made a comment about you know not having a scroll wheel anymore, and you can touch and stuff. Like, so if you are using a platform that's designed to make things the same, but your app does need to be different on different platforms, how do you balance that? So we're not going for making an it look native. We're going for we're going for making it look like Avanza. So definitely, it will look like. I mean, it won't look native in that sense, uh, and the design patterns. But we don't want the end user to feel that it's you know the normal feeling that you get with a uh, web included in 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 an app. It should be. It should still feel like an app but not necessarily like an iOS specific platform app. Uh, very nice presentation. Uh, I just have like one short question. Apple is not very fond of us usually loading resources that they don't control. And quite often there's like the risk of them saying no based on kind of the reviewer you have at this point. Has that happened so far or how would you kind of handle that scenario? Uh, when you when they ask you, for example, to have static content always and guarantee and things like that, how would you handle if they say no to your release? Uh, the short answer, it hasn't happened. Uh, so we're still learning and we want to see if and when that happens, uh, but it hasn't happened. Uh, but it's a good question. We've been talking about that as well, but it hasn't happened. If anyone has cases where that has happened, we're, we're glad to <laughs> you can just help us to learn from that. Scenario in most cases, like it always varies mm. what you have to kind yeah. of use to yeah. stop it. Yeah. That's why I can answer. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. 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 So kind of aware of the. Um, great presentation. Uh, I just had a question. Uh, you mentioned some like platform technologies uh, in the slide, like push notifications. And as far as I know, there's no way to use push notifications with PVAs right now. Uh, how have you solved that? That's right. On iOS, you can't use push notifications API uh, if it's standalone PWA. But if you are using it in an app, then you can use the native options for push notification. That's what we are doing on iOS. So it's like some you use some kind of bridge between the PVA and and the native APIs to to do that. Yes. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Uh, yes. My question is, um, where did you decide to go for PWA instead of something like React Native that could also have a a tight stack, you know, cross-functional teams and other and the other objectives that you said you were looking for. Well, what did you consider other technologies, or was there a specific reason to go for PWA? Thank you. Uh, there were several things. Uh, we had a long list of of 
things that we uh, um, reviewed when reviewing different technologies. Uh, but the thing that stood out with PWA that was it was fairly good on all different uh, areas. Uh, we couldn't find any other any other technology that could make us go from three different technologies into one. It was only PWA. The other ones could only take us from three down to two. Uh, and on top of that, a lot of the challenges, or like most of them were really good at, at one aspect, but less good on, a, on another. PWA was fairly good on, on all different. But I, I think we had, we had a long list of things that we were we grouped them into six different groups, and it's it's rich. Everything it, it's everything from um, from from uh, performance to actually recruiting people into the company, and and uh, how fun it is to actually code uh, with these kinds of technologies. One last question. So, what um, when moving to a thing like? PWA, um, you have a, you know, a, a fleet of engineers who are, I assume, native iOS engineers who know UIKit. When you need them to be web developers now, like, how do you manage that? We don't, because we, we see a lot of things that we still want to, to do in native. We're not going 100% of the app to, to uh, PWA. We want that specific small thing where uh, native is really needed, we still want uh, to do those things. And for that, we have gathered all of them in one specific team to work on those specific things instead of just copying other interfaces that everyone else is, is doing and is fairly simple. So we're focusing that team on, on doing what I see is, is more fun stuff, actually, uh, as a native. Uh, 